Get your kit off, get your kit off. Everybody strip off, get your kit off. Everybody strip, everybody strip. Everybody strip at the skinny dip. Everybody strip, everybody strip. Everybody strip at the skinny dip. Get naked at the naughty skinny dip. Make it at the naughty skinny dip. Well, are you ready to get naked in the North Sea? I'm certainly not, I can tell you. But each September, at sunrise around the equinox, those singers are joined by over a thousand others to plunge into the freezing water naked in that northeast skinny dip which raises money for the mental health charity Mind. Now, listener Jackie Hig- Higginson from Sunderland has organised this event since 2012 as one of her jobs as a self-employed worker. But this week, this year, she's run into a problem with the Department for Work and Pensions. Along with thousands of other low-income self-employed people, she recently lost her tax credits from HMRC and had to claim universal credit instead. Now, that's run by the Department for Work and Pensions and it told her that universal credit rules will count the money she raises for charity as her income, even though she gives all the profit to mind. And as a result, in the months around the skinny dip for for most of the year, she would be stripped of her universal credit. Well, Jackie's with us now. Um, Jackie, lovely to talk to you, and I must ask you first... Hello, Paul. (laughs) What's the appeal of plunging naked into the North Sea with a thousand strangers? (laughs) Well... The northeast skinny dip is is so much more than just running naked into the sea. It's a, it's a celebration, really. It's a celebration of life and of nature, of health, of courage, and of our freedom. <laughs> and of being um, cold. How much has he yeah. ra- raised for mine since 2012? Since 2012, together we have raised over £140,000 for mental health charities. Goodness, that's extraordinary. And how does it work? People buy a ticket from Eventbrite. What happens to that money? That's right, yeah. I call it a pledge. I like to think of it as a pledge. Um, But as the event grew, it it did have to become a ticketed event uh, for safety reasons. Um, So I invite people to to make a pledge of £15 to take part. And um, all profits, all proceeds from Mm. from that donation will go directly to Tyneside and Northumberland Mind. Yes. I also offer a a donate what you can option for the low wage so that it's um, Mm. available to all. People can donate less or indeed more if they can afford it. But you pay yourself a small amount. The money from ticket sales is paid to you and it's in a separate account but in your name. When you claimed tax credits, was HMRC happy with that? Yes, it was never a problem. Mm-hmm. So, but now you've yeah, gone on to uh, universal credit. There's a person at the job centre, they're called a work coach, you report to them. What did they say to you about it? I had my first meeting um, with my work coach uh, a couple of months ago, and I was told that I must declare all of the money <laughs> that I fundraise as my personal income. I was told that I was running a business and that it was my choice to give the money away to charity. And can you can you appeal against that decision? Um, I I have I've tried to discuss it, but there doesn't seem to be any mm. um, and, opening for discussion. Right. Um, and and so, the, the the only option I was given was to make a note in my journal explaining the situation mm. and to request that that my case be referred to a decision maker. And what financial effect would that have on you if all that money? I mean, how much did you raise last year, for example, if all that counted as income? Well, in total, we raised almost 40000 but some of that is raised via a fundraising page, so it doesn't all come to me. No, but that um, would really but practically wipe out. A lot out. of money would sit in my account, mm. yeah, during the, the um, months of uh, running up to the event. And wipe out your benefit completely. Jackie Higgins. Yeah, I don't know yet how it would affect my claim or the money mm. I receive, but um, at the moment, I'm expecting it to stop it completely. Jackie Hickinson, thanks for talking to us. Sorry to rush you. Well, we, we contacted the Department for Work and Pensions. It told us Jackie's case is complex, it's being investigated, and she will be contacted in due course. With me in the studio is Devon Galani, Director of Policy in Practice. That's an organisation which helps people understand and indeed claim benefits they're due. So, Devon Galani, Jackie's case, obviously, a slightly unusual one. But they're all self-employed people are different, I suppose. What do you make of her situation? Well, it's complex, but firstly, let me say it sounds fantastic. So, um, I'm not sure if it's my cup of tea, but uh, it's brilliant to grow an event from, I think it was 50 people in year one to over 1,000 people today. So I think that's the first first thing to say. And, and finding ways to encourage people to take those first steps into work is something that 
you know, fundamentally, I think DWP should be looking to do. I think the difference in Jackie's case from the way it was treated as tax credits is HMRC took a very kind of hands-off approach to self-assessment. And what you see there is it has its strengths and, and downsides. Its downsides can be people left with big overpayments at the end of the year if, if they haven't declared um, what would otherwise be income. But they tend to take a much more hands-off approach, whereas DWP takes a different approach uh, around monthly assessments. So they're looking, looking at income and outgoings in a particular mm. month. Um, and that's what they're doing in this case. So if Jackie's raising funds and that's sitting in her account, that DWP may well see that as income in that monthly assessment period, and that would count against her universal credit. And I think uh, I've talked about it with a few colleagues. It is complex. It's, it's ultimately it's DWP. Um, it needs to be explored with DWP. But I think separating out the donations from maybe the income she sets aside for actually doing the work is one way in which you could make this clearer to DWP, perhaps. Yes, and, and she's obviously thinking she might try and get it changed, but that, that can be a complicated process, can't it? And the government tells us universal credit recognises that self-employed people experience periods of fluctuating earnings. But, you know, several people have been in touch. Another one, a musician, she's a musician, worried that her irregular work means a lot more effort. She has to work it out every month, whereas normally with your self-employed, it, it's every year that you have to sort it out. Is this putting people off? claiming universal credit once their uh, tax credits stop. Yeah, I think there's a real risk, um, and you can see it in some of the numbers. So I think DWP are recognising that far more people, they're expecting far more people to move from tax credits to universal credit, and I think you know, over 20% aren't that they um, would have otherwise expected to. So that's kind of one in five people that they expected to be on universal credit that are choosing to opt out. I think it's a real shame. Um, what I'd suggest to people who are making that, making that um, move from uh, tax credits to universal credit is that um, firstly you've got 12 months to look at your situation so if you've got savings you can still move across and they won't look at that for 12 months if you've got um, in this case fluctuating earnings or or low earnings they'll set aside rules around the minimum income floor for 12 months so you've got time to move across to universal credit get some proper advice and ultimately far more people it is the replacement for in-work support so far more people are able to claim universal credit then. Uh, and very briefly you say get advice she obviously needs advice about appealing if nothing else where from very briefly um, I think mandatory reconsideration is probably the first step um, and afterwards you can go to tribunal but I do think you can um, like a work allowance would be an incredible way for it's a part of universal credit it means you can do some work without your benefits being affected so you're calling for a change in that Devin Galani of Policy and Practice thanks and our thanks to sisters Isabella and Gabriel Warburton Brown for that skinny dipping song it's still in my head I must say <laughs>